the topic of the day that we're going to cover is how to deliver inspiring public speaking so that people will love to listen to you, inspiring, and they take actions after your presentation, and also how to deliver impactful presentation skill that people can learn from your presentation and they take actions. So inspiring means they want to listen to you, okay? And also impactful means they want to take actions after your presentation to them. So this is the topic of our masterclass today, okay? And uh, I hope you will take notes and also learn from these techniques and the tips to improve yourself as the influential public speaker, plus learning the tips and techniques to conduct impactful presentation skills. Let me ask, let me start with our session today by asking two questions. I'm going to ask you two questions about this. Okay, so I want all of you to answer in the chat box, yes, no. Okay, so as you all know, the answer for yes is this, no is this. This is how I want you all to answer in a chat box immediately after I ask this question. Okay, so if you're ready, answer my question number one, just yes, no. Okay, how many of you, okay, here would like to overcome the fear of public speaking? Go ahead and type your answers in the chat box now. Okay, how many of you would like to overcome the fear of public speaking? Quickly answer all this. Okay, that's cool. All right, almost every one of you would like to do that. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And now the second question. Okay, the second question is this. Think of the question and answer immediately yes, no in the chat box. Now the second question is, how many of you, okay, all right, let me read that. Okay, how many of you would like to learn useful and practical tips to deliver an impactful presentation? Go ahead and type in the chat box. How many of you would like to do that? All right. That's interesting, okay? All of you say yes. Okay, all of you say yes. That's interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next one hour, what I'm going to do, as you wanted, as you wish, okay, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to coach you how to become an influential public speaking personnel, plus some of the practical and useful tips so that you can apply in your presentation to engage your audience and ultimately, Deliver a presentation can change people's life, okay? As you wanted, that's what we're going to do in the next one hour. Are you ready? If you're ready, hit the chat box, say that I am ready. Write down so that I know when to start. Go ahead and type if you are ready to take on this presentation now. Just type I am ready. Go ahead. Okay, I like the capital words. That's nice, okay. This is fun and this is engaging, okay? This is really, really nice. This is really, really nice. Okay, people, get ready. So what are the things that we're going to cover today? All right? There are five elements that we're going to cover in the next one hour quickly also. And the topics that we're going to cover today will be, first of all, we're going to identify what are the barriers to effective communications. That means what actually stop you from communicating effectively okay, to one another? It seems like, you know, I spoke very well. But how come they don't understand? You know, you sometimes you have that um, issue in your head, right? So we're going to identify what are the issues? Why actually the communications barriers happen? That will be topic number one. The next topic, we're going to cover what is the communication gap? How come what I say is not the same as what people understand? We're going to look into the communication gap and how to overcome the communication gap. And the third one, okay, now we know the problem. Now how to plan and prepare for effective public speaking. What are the 10 steps? Okay, easy to remember, 10 steps in preparing for your public speaking and for your presentation. Then one of the most important steps in delivering public speaking is where you clearly know who is the audience who is going to listen to you. Then how to customize your content for them, for them to understand. So that is the the topics that we're going to cover. Ultimately, I'm going to give you the seven C of communication mastery. If you prepare well the seven C, okay, seven C, you will actually make sure the communications will be very effective and engaging. 
So this would be the five topics that we're going to cover today. Let us start with the three most important tips that will change the way you do your presentation. Most important. Tips number one, okay? Nobody likes to listen to others, all right? Nobody likes to listen to others. They always say, that, aha, there's another session, or oh, why I'm for being forced to attend these sessions and whatnot. They always have these kind of issues in their head. Okay. So I have to make sure the audience want to listen to you. Even when they don't know you, who you are, and they don't know what is the topic is all about, and they are not really interested to be here to listen to you. So how to make sure that you can get their attention immediately and do the presentation. This is where the tips coming in. Remember earlier, I did a quick audience checks. Okay, The best way to get the audience listen to you is to do the audience check. So what I did was, I actually asked two questions. I asked two questions. Question number one is how many of you fear of public speaking? Everybody say yes. Everybody said yes. Then I asked the second question, how many would like to get some useful tips? for your presentation skills, everybody say yes. So after I got two yes from you, it's you are the one who said, and I said, hello, I'm here not to speak. I'm here to deliver what you want. Because you asked, you said that you fear of public speaking. You said that you want tips. And I said in the next one hour, I'm going to give you these two. And now I turn it the other way around. I didn't say that I'm here to speak. I'm here because there is a need for you, inside you. There is a need that you want to overcome public speaking. There is a need that you want some tips. So I said, I am going to fulfill your needs. So after I say that, now your attention will be higher because you are here to listen to what I'm going to say, which is going to be useful to you. Not useful to me, but useful to you. So that is the best way to start of any of your, what you call public speaking and also presentation, asking the audience what they want, then tell them that you are here to give them what they want. Then they will be more engaged in that sense. They'll be more engaged in that sense. They want to learn more. So remember these tips. Always ask questions that they must say yes. So when I ask you the questions, how many of you would like to overcome the fear of public speaking? Everybody say yes. When I ask the questions, how many of you would like to have some tips? Everybody say yes. Then once they say yes, we overcome that by listening to my presentation. Okay, so that is the tips. So what you and how you're supposed to start your presentation? Three tips, remember. First, okay, you start by telling them, right, what you're going to tell them. That's right. You tell them what you're going to tell them. Okay, remember, I started by asking you the questions, what they want, and I told them, I told the, the audience, okay, this is what I'm going to give. Then the next slides that I showed to you, I showed the table of content. I tell them, I tell you what I'm going to tell you. I said, after this, in the next one hour, we're going to cover topic number one, topic number two, topic number three, topic number four, topic number five. This is the five things that I'm going to tell you. So. In advance, tell them, what are you going to tell them? The table of content is very, very important. Must be a very clear table of content, very simple table of content. Then after that, you tell them, okay? You just go out and you tell them one by one what you promised earlier. I promised five things. You may promise three things, four things, five things. So you go one by one. Later, you will see how I go these five topics one by one later. Then last, most importantly, at the end of the session, you tell them what you told them. You must make a summary of what you have told them so that they can recall listening to your points earlier. They must recall. So remember these three steps. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you told them. Follow this formula. Your presentation won't fail. I repeat, follow this formula. This presentation won't fail. I hope you all have captured these three points. Let's 
get it rolling. The first topic of the day, what is the barriers to effective communication? So I invite any one of you to unmute yourself or I invite, okay, all of you to try, go to the chat box. Why do you think communication fail? What is the barriers of communication? How come sometimes the communication not as effective as you want? One of uh, one or two points here, you can hit it in a chat box or you can unmute yourself and share with us what is the things that actually stopping you from conducting effective communication. Go ahead, people. Anyone would like to share with me or please uh, write down in the chat box why communication fail? What are the barriers to effective communication? Go ahead, type in the chat box as well as uh, you can unmute yourself and talk to me right now. Come on. Uh -huh, okay, uh, Zul Hafiz, you are very right. Shy, yes, definitely, I like that. Okay, yeah, very true. Wow, Hidayah says insecurity. Yeah, the fear inside you, whether I'm correct or not, whether what the audience will be thinking of me. Yeah, the insecurity. Good, good, good points, good points. This too, shy and insecurity. What about the rest, okay? You want to speak to us also, can, yeah? All right? Uh, language barrier, yes, I hate. That's another thing is that, you know, you speak in a different language, they do not understand the language as sometimes some of the concept, uh, some slang, you know, dialects. Yes, language barriers there. Lack of eye contact. Yes, absolutely. So if I'm talking to you, you see, even though I've got a different uh, level of the uh, camera, I still try to focus on the camera so that you can feel that Mehan is looking at me. So eye contact is going to be the critical uh, aspect in ensuring the audience are with you and they listen to you and they understand what you say. And most importantly, they take action based on what they think. Yes, Ishraq, is there anything that you wanted to say, Ishraq? Yes, sir. Sometimes the body language matters because- Oh, yes. What do you mean? Uh, that, that's very important. But what do you think of the way? Uh, can you explain what do you mean by uh, body language? Because sometimes we get nervous in front of the people when we go for a presentation. To like, agree. I agree. Sometimes uh, get too much information what they need to uh, just want to listen what is the main agenda and the summary. But we yeah. took too much time and just shall feel shy and not getting the right information. That's why the body language matters. Then you start to feel small, maybe a panic mode. I Sometimes know. you'll be sweating, you know. Uh, some people, they'll have a choking, you know, you'll never know. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's absolute, uh, the correct, correct one, okay? Then also, uh, that's uh, uh, Ashikin was saying that lack of trust, okay, possible, possible, because maybe the audience don't believe in the speaker's credibility to say what he is saying. So that is where the lack of trust coming in. Uh, thank you very much. I think all of you, uh, those uh, who gave me the pointers, are uh, excellent, all spot on pointers. And allow me to share the 10, language barriers that uh, you must be aware of when you're conducting a public speaking or presentation. And what are the barriers are going to be? Number one barrier, okay? Use of jargon, you know? Sometimes, because some people, they use too much of uh, buzzwords, um, uh, complicated words, you know? Like when you go and see the doctor, the doctor will use uh, the very, a high level of terminologies and you yourself don't know what the doctor is talking about, okay? So when you go into that mode, okay? This is where the problem is going to come in. The second one is emotional barriers, okay? And taboos. There are some people, they may find it that difficult to express emotion because they don't feel comfortable uh, sharing the topic because they feel it's very taboo, okay? They said, oh no, I shouldn't be saying this, okay? Or as a girl, I cannot talk, tell this, you know, they have got this limitation, okay? So that will be the emotional barriers. And sometimes we also know, right, lack of attention from the audience, you know, from the audience, because it is not the area of interest, whatever that you are talking, uh, maybe they are not interested in that. Uh, distractions, there are some other better things for them to focus on, or maybe some noise, or irrelevant, irrelevant to the receiver. The receiver says, okay, why, why, why am I here? This is not a topic that I want, okay? Irrelevant, okay? You're going to talk to them about how to uh, uh, do the brick lowering uh, to someone who is a surgeon. So, you know, the topic is not uh, connected at all. Uh, beyond that, you also know that the...
Say you're not doing. That's well. Okay. Uh, this is where I'm uh, trying. They they told me that the internet is going to be uh, better. But uh, uh, Zul Hafiz, I think you want to type. I'm muted, but you type Michael. <laughs> there is a uh, what do you call the uh, auto correction? I think. Okay. Let's uh, continue uh, with this again. All right. Um, share the screen again. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Okay, uh, I think uh, we are here now. Is that uh, presentation is clear now? Yes. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for response. Uh, remember that we were talking about the difference in perception, okay? Because uh, from where you come from, you definitely may want to, uh, you probably you understand things differently, okay? Maybe when somebody is talking about um, uh, how to become rich, but uh, your perceptions, your point of view is that money is not important. Okay, so maybe that is not attracting their uh, attention. Okay, and also we are talking about physical disabilities. You know, sometimes people born with some limitations. You know, in Bahasa we call it uh, sengau because uh, uh, voices are not very clear. Some people may have some difficulties in listening. Okay, uh, that also can cause some lack of uh, effective uh, communication. Then we are talking about language differences. Okay. Uh, different languages and uh, people trying to uh, what do you call it, speak, try to speak in a different language and the intonations and the enunciations, the pronunciations, all are different, okay? So these are some of the issues that causing language barriers. Another five more, physical barriers, okay? Physical barriers means uh, not able to see, uh, non-verbal cues, you know, I'm, I'm very excited here, uh, but imagine that my camera is not on, so you will never see me excited, then you'll be have a lack of interest because you cannot see my gestures, my body language, my posture, and all that. Very important. You wanted to follow the speaker. You want to know the speaker is really genuine. The speaker really want to give you the best. Then your your commitment to listen will be higher. Psychological barrier because sometimes when the speaker speak, maybe he is being disturbed, so he cannot focus and bring all the points together. And also the audience who not in the right frame of mind because something happened in their life and they are very, very uh, unhappy about something and they are just sitting there, you know, in front of you, then you know that the communication is not taking place. Then you will be disturbed and they will be disturbed and whatnot. And we are talking about the expectation and prejudice. People coming in, they're expecting you to deliver certain topics, okay? Um, as, uh, assuming, that this is the most important thing that the speaker must speak while, while he is talking a different matters. So this will be the thing. Or oh, the prejudice. Prejudice here means basically you don't like that uh, speaker, okay? Uh, or maybe you don't like the audience. So when you start, ah, oh, come on, who they are? Why, why, am I, uh, why am I here for? Or the audience thinking that, huh, this person, you think what is very good, is it? So people start to have some prejudice and stereotypes about each other, that will stop uh, the communication. And finally, we are talking about cultural differences. Where you come from, what you're trying to tell may not be understood by them, particularly if you are trying to tell some jokes. Well, if they don't come from the same culture as you, they may not understand the jokes as well, okay? So that is going to be some of the thing, all right? Um, allow me to take uh, something. Okay, let's go into our next presentations. Okay, next topic. Okay, so we have covered this. How to overcome these barriers. Okay, so strategies to overcome barriers of effective communications. So we have seen about 10 barriers and how to overcome this. So that topic will bring in the communication gap. You see, remember my tips earlier? First, you give all five topics. Tell them, we're going to tell them. Tell them one by one. You see, I coming back to the agenda paper. I'm saying that 
next is we're going to cover this. So I already prepared you. Then I will go through the next topic as well. All right. So this is how you keep your audience attention glued to you because they know what's coming next. They are not in for a surprise thing. So this is how you arrange your presentation. First, you tell them table of content. Then every time you come back to the table of content, tell them that we're going to do this next. We're going to do this. This is how we're going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's start with our next, uh, what you call a communication gap. So what is actually this communication gap is all about, you know, communication gap. Let's find out the, the real reason for communication gap. Okay. Posia, you are here. Are you ready to play a game with me, Posia? Okay. Now, this is going to be Malaysian 15 cent. Yeah, this is going to be Malaysian 15 cent. Posia, can you take a look at this 15 cent? Can you see it clearly? Can you see it very clearly? Yes. What sir. do you see, Posia? What do you wow. see? No, see Wait, carefully. Sorry? See carefully. It's not wow. It's a shilling. The picture. No, it's a shilling. The picture inside the shilling. What is that? It's wow, no. I think it's discuss, you know, uh, Bungaraya. Bungaraya. See clearly. That's see see clearly. No. No. Was here? Come on. Are you blind or what? Or am I blind? <laughs> come on, go ahead. Last chance for you. I can see Bungaraya. I see wow. Oh, no. You see, ladies and gentlemen. Posia will never agree with me. Will never agree with me because you know why? I showed her the coin and she saw this wow. And she's telling that it's wow in the wow, wow. But you see, when I was showing her this, I was seeing this at the back of the coin. I was looking at it from here. She's looking at it from there. She's not going to agree with me and I'm not going to agree with her because she decided to see things from her viewpoint only. She's not seeing things from my viewpoint. And I see things from my viewpoint only. And I'm not seeing things from her viewpoint. And we are not going to get, agree with each other. We will only agree with each other when she decided to see it from my viewpoint. And I decided to see it from her viewpoint. Then both will agree, yeah, you are right. Otherwise, I will never tell she's right because I will say the only picture that I see is the picture of Bungaraya or his sister. You understand? So this is what we call as a communication gap because both are right. Both are right. It's nothing wrong, but both are not agreeing with each other. It's like this. When people talk about it, you have seen this picture, right? One says it's six, one says it's nine. Who's right? Both are right, but both are arguing because they see it from a different angle. And this is what we call as the communication gap. And we must make sure when we communicate with each other, we must overcome this communication. And how can we do that? How can we do that? We must be really, really prepared for the communication process. And this is where, how to conduct the communication by going through a good preparation and planning. Let me quickly walk you through 10 steps, but you don't have to remember all, don't worry. 10 steps that needed before you conduct any public speaking or presentation. And what are the 10 steps that we're going to go through? Number one, all right? The planning and preparation for public speaking, okay? So number one, always remember this, okay? This is the tips number two, yeah? Okay? You must be very, very clear with the subject matter mastery with clear objective. You must know the subject matter in your fingertips. So when you know the subject that you're going to talk about in detail, you'll have a self-confidence to speak about it. You can only gain self-confidence if you master the knowledge. You, you are not going to have that confidence if you're not sure okay, uh, about the subject and you worry that somebody from the audience going to ask you questions. Okay, how you can overcome? Be ready with the content more as much as possible. Okay, and you also must know 
your objective of conducting the presentation. That's very key, important key. So remember, there are two things. One is mastering the content. Second is having self-confidence. Remember these two. They all come together. Okay. So I, I like this, the, uh, how to develop the self-confidence part. Okay. It says like this, research and study the subject. Develop a lot of knowledge. Of course, these two must come with your interest in the subject matter. Because if you don't have interest, you're not going to learn more, right? Okay. Then after you, uh, what you call, with your interest, research, knowledge, and you call, uh, the subject matter, now you must believe in what you're going to tell. You must have that conviction. You must believe in what you're going to tell them. And you must tell the audience that you believe in what you're saying. Let's say if you are selling a medicine, okay, for instance, but you yourself don't eat that medicine. You worry about the side effect. But you try to sell it to other people. And how are others going to buy it from you? Because they don't see you believe in the medicine that you're selling. All right? So that's the whole idea. The whole idea is that you must tell people that why you think that what you're sharing is important for them because you believe in it. Then you do a lot, as many times possible, rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. Okay? Matter of fact, I have done this topic hundreds of times in my life. And, and if I want to do this one earlier, I can easily do without having any preparation. But I had my very own preparation just now. Go through the slides, changing the slides, preparing something new, all the things. Because nothing beat rehearsal and remembering the facts again, just before the presentation. That is what, whenever I go for my training, my coaching, my uh, presentation, for the last 15 minutes, I won't talk to anybody. I will never allow anybody to come and talk to me. I'll be focusing on my, what do you call, my uh, presentation, my slides, my notes, I'll go through. Then I will leave the room just before I start the session. I'll leave the room. Probably, uh, depending on where, uh, if it is the hotel, I'll go outside. And sometimes, you know, I can't even go anywhere else. So I go to the toilet. to be all alone. Okay? Then I'll find a place where I do my breathing uh, exercise and some physical exercise to loosen my body, take a deep breath, and I close my eyes, I visualize. I visualize the success of the session. I'll do these three without fail. Before things. Sometimes I do this even when I'm driving my car. All right? I do a lot of breathing. I'll take in a lot of oxygen. Okay, uh, Pump a lot of oxygen in my brain. Then I'll loosen up my muscle so that you'll have some stiff muscle because you're stressed. All right? Then I will be doing some visualization or meditation. So this is so very important, okay? Then we are talking about, you are going in with a high level of confidence. Remember, they conducted the research in the United States. They says, what is the most fearful thing in your life? What do you fear the most? You know, they ask. They says, oh, I fear the most mm, death, Matian. Number two, public speaking as number one. So you can imagine, because there is a definitely lack of interest, lack of confidence in people to do this. Then how can you overcome this? You may follow the nine P rules, yeah? You may follow the nine P rules. What are the nine P rules is all about, okay? Let me walk you through. The nine P rule says, prior proper preparation, okay, prevents poor performance of the person putting on the presentation. And this is the 9P rule. Okay, prior proper preparation, okay, prevents poor performance of the person putting on the presentation. So it's all about your preparing yourself so well for that. Okay, always, always do some extra preparation and rehearsal. Okay, that brings us to the 10 step that you need to focus. So what will be the 10 step? And number one, decide 
why you are giving the speaking sessions? You must know why. What is the purpose of people calling you? What is the purpose of your standing in front of the mic? You must know why you are there. You must know why you are there. Then you are talking about, you must know the audience. Who is sitting in front of you to listen to you? Who they are? What they are expecting? What is the expectation? And number three is that, know where you'll be presenting it. Okay, is it going to be in Zoom? Or whether it's going to be face-to-face? -face, or whether it's going to be the hall? Where? The location is very important. Those days, my assistant will go and find out the place and they'll take a photo of the place and we will be actually visiting the place to know what, how big the hall is, where I'll be standing, where will be the LCD project hall. Nowadays, it's quite easy because nowadays we are talking about people taking the video and sharing with me through WhatsApp. Okay, but very important to know where it is. Okay, and remember, research and know your facts. That's very, very important. You must know your facts. If you don't know your facts, people will know that you didn't prepare for that. Okay, there's people coming there to listen to you. Okay, prepare what you're going to present. So, but you have too many uh, what you call um, uh, topics and points. But now you have to uh, what you call prepare clearly. What is that among the hundred things I know? What are the five things that I'm going to share? And when I'm talking about this planning, uh, this topic of uh, impactful presentation and whatnot, I actually conduct this train the trainer training, or TTT they call it, for three days. I do this for three days. But I cannot bring all the topics here uh, to give you within one hour. So what I will do, I have chosen only five topics. So this is where uh, prepare what you are going to present. You have to identify that one, okay? The next one, prepare your notes. You got to have the notes in place uh, with you. Even though you are fully prepared, you got to have your things. As I mentioned, I have done this hundreds and thousands of times. But before I speak, I will have my very own notes as well. Even now, I do that, yeah? Okay? Then you're talking about memorize your introduction. Ah, how are you going to attract the attention? You see, just now, I memorized my introduction by giving you audience check. How many of you are going to? Um, um, a few of public speaking, how many of you would like to have some uh, tips? I, I, that is the introduction that I memorized and I know that it's going to work. I know that introduction will work. Come out with one unique introduction to attract people's attention to that one and know how you will present it. If you are in a public speaking, whether it's going to be by storytelling, whether it's going to be PowerPoint presentation and whatnot. These are very, very important. Then rehearse and rehearse and rehearse your presentation. I have done this even before I am giving this. I went through my, uh, my slides earlier. I actually check everything if it is okay or not. Even though, again, as I said, I've done this 100 times. But once I go through this, I'll have more confidence in doing that. Okay? And finally, they're talking about always expect that things can go wrong. Okay? Not everything is perfect. Like just now, I was talking to you, suddenly Zoom disconnected. So you are not supposed to panic, right? So when you go to the audience, sometimes there will be LCD projector won't be working. And that's where your notes are very important. If LCD is not working, you must have notes for you to continue the presentation, okay? Or sometimes it will be, I've gone through a place where in a public hall and thunderstorm, heavy, and the raindrops on the ceiling is so loud, I'm using my microphone, people, audience cannot listen to me, all right? So um, I expect that to happen. You know, like yesterday we talked about the uh, Murphy's Law, right? So how to overcome that is again another key here. Okay, this is the 10 facts, which is all of you probably, some of you already know, but I would like to focus only on one out of this for the purpose of our meeting today. So what is that? Okay, so we're going to focus on the audience analysis. Remember the audience analysis? Remember in the 10 things? Then one of the most important thing before you go and do your presentation is to know who your audience are, where they come from, what is their background, why they are there. Is that because they're forced to come there? Unless you know everything about the audience, you cannot prepare something effective. So this is why before I, my coaching session, my training session, my staff will contact 
the office and they'll find out who are the audience, where they are coming from, what is their previous knowledge, have they attended any training before or not, and uh, what is the benefit they're expecting after my, my training. All this I will find out. All this I'll find out. Sometimes we also ask, is there any troublemakers in the group or not? And we also will ask about that. Okay, whenever we go to uh, what you call training like uh, team building, we want to know, is there any troublemakers that can cause some danger to others or not? We want to know about all these. Once I know the audience, then we can focus on giving our targeted training. So what is this audience analysis? Okay, you can see the word audience itself, I'm going to deliver the audience analysis. Number one, before the training, you got to find out, okay? Analyze who they are, how many will be there? That's what you ask. Who they are, how many will be there? The second, understand where they are right now in their knowledge. To what level? Understand where they are. Because some of them may ask for some basic thing. Some of them may ask for some advanced thing. So you must know how you're going to customize your content to them. Demographics, okay? Uh, what about their age? Uh, what about their gender? Uh, their educational background? So that you can actually customize according to their need. And of course, most importantly, you're talking about interests. Why they're there? Are they being forced to come there? Or because they want to improve their uh, self-development and they are, they are here because they want to get their promotion. Find out about the reasons why they are there. What about the environment? Okay, where I'll be standing, okay, where is the rostrum, whether I'll be using mic or not using mic, all that will be really, really important. Then look for their needs. Same like interest, is there any needs, okay, for, of the audience? What about your needs? I will be telling people all the time, okay, I need microphone, I need two microphones there, and I need um, connectivity to internet. Then I want a connectivity of uh, audio, video. Yes, I'm going to play video and whatnot. So all that I will be clearly communicating to the, uh, what you call, organizers. Customize, very important. Customize means you turn your content in exactly into what they want and who they want. So that will be the customization of the content part of it. Very, very important. Okay. Then you're talking about expectations. Okay, ultimately, what do they want? What they want to bring with them? That's what we call as the expectation. Unless you know the expectation, you cannot customize your content. Then if you can meet their expectation, they will be with you all the way. Remember how to know the expectation? Sometimes you don't have to ask them. You can tell them what is the expectation. I did that at the beginning of this session. I asked how many of you would like to overcome the fear of uh, public speaking, you all say yes. I said, how many of you would like to learn the tips? You all say yes. Now I said that, okay, now in the next one hour, I'm going to give you tips to overcome the fear of public speaking. I'm going to give you tips to conduct an impactful presentation. Are you ready? And all of you said, I am ready. Then I started. So when I start, now I am fulfilling your expectations because this is what you want. You said you want. You see, I, I, I made a trick Instead of me telling what I'm going to tell, but I told that I'm going to give you what you want. So that is how it is. So audience analysis is very, very important. So once you know all this, now you are conducting the training. You are there already. So you have to take what we call as a softened approach. Okay, the approach must be very soft. Then how are you going to overcome this public speaking with the softened approach? And this is how you're going to do that. First of all, smile. You can see that apart from about 5 to 10% of my time that I'm not smiling, other than that, I will be smiling all the time. Very, very important being a speaker, put up the smile to reduce the resistance of the speakers. Okay. Open posture. You are not hiding anything. Be open up. Tell people that I'm here. I've got nothing to hide. Okay. Friendly, relaxed, and confident. Very important. The audience must know that you are very, very Confident, forward lean. When you are in a public speaking and all thing, all the time, go towards the audience. Don't hide yourself, and also don't, okay, bring yourself as if that you are in a fearful mode. Okay, you're going to say something important. Tell them that what I'm going to say is going to be really, really important to you. Which I started 
uh, this session by saying that this is going to be the most important presentation for you, I say. That's going to change your career, change your life. Be confident. Territory, if you are speaking in front of the audience, find out where do you'll be standing, what will be your platform. Move around. You're, you're not a, what do you call, a, just uh, standing up there behind the rostrum. I never stand behind the rostrum. I will step out of the restroom. That's what I always ask for. Flip on mic to go to the audience and talk about that. Very important. Just now we heard about the importance of eye contact. Yes, make the audience feel that you're looking at them. Even though you've got thousands of them in sitting in front of you, you have to make every thousands of them feel that the speaker is looking at me. Okay, so it's quite easy in Zoom. Just all I have to do is that look at the, uh, what do you call the, the, the camera. But in a public speaking, the audience will be 1,000, so I have to scan, I have to look into people when I talk to them. Very, very important, okay? The next one is note ahead, okay? So that means when they are talking, then you, of course, going to note your head as many times as possible. So just to illustrate the point that you understand their questions and whatnot. So remember these two things. Audience analysis, earlier I spoke about it, how to understand the audience, how to get ready for the thing. And during presentation, take a softened approach. Take a softened approach. Smile, open posture, forward lean, master your territory, keep eye contact, and always agree with the audience. If you do these two things, I think you are ready. But you want to know one more thing. Because, yeah, but is there any tips for the communication or not? And allow me to give you the 7C of effective communication tips. So what is this 7C, yeah? Okay. Remember, every time, either written or verbal, remember this 7C. Number one, make sure you are very clear with what you're talking about. Okay. You are very clear with what you're talking about. So that means people must understand your message. People must understand your message. They cannot misunderstand your message. End of the day, don't, don't allow them to go home not knowing what you're talking about. No, cannot be like that. You must be very clear with that. Second, they're talking about very concise. Don't beat around the bush. Don't beat around the bush. Very concise. What you want to speak, what you're like today, right? I started the session. I am actually concise with my presentation. I stick to my guidance. I stick to my presentation that I'm talking to clearly only about the things that I want to do. I don't jump out of the topic. So be clear, be concise. That is the mode that you take. And the next three and four is very important because three and four is all about facts. Okay? Here you're talking about your data must be concrete. Your evidences must be there. Okay? And those data and evidences must be correct. It cannot be People can be debating your points. You cannot. You must give the correct points. And also, you must talk about, right, in a clear picture, what you're telling them. Your message must be very concrete. So, like, I'm talking about effective communication. I'm all I'm focusing on the communication, presentation, and public speaking. I am not going to talk about any other thing. And I'm giving you the facts related to this subject matter. So, these are the four things. What about the other three? The other three will be coherent. Let's have a flow, you know, so that people can follow what you're saying. There must be a flow to that one. All right? And you see the way that I'm, I prepared the session for you. There is a flow. Then you're talking about make sure there is a proper closure. Remember the three tips? Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. The last tip is that tell them what you told them. So you have to do the summary of it. You must complete your communication with the summary of what you have said, okay? Later, you'll see how I'm going to sum up with whatever that we have discussed. And finally, can you, is it possible to be courteous, you know, to say it nicely, you know, to, to use the right language, uh, not offensive language, not aggressive language, to say nicely, okay, uh, to that audience about what you're going to say. Okay, so you see, now, if you have gone through this, five, uh, sorry, seven C, you will have a very impactful presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last one hour, exactly one hour or so, 
what we have done. Okay, remember we have done on the topic of various of effective communications. All right, we looked into the ten reasons why communication is not successful. Then we went into the communication gap. Remember the fifty cent coin game that we played. All right, so people don't agree with each other because they don't want to see from other people's viewpoint. Then we went into the ten planning and preparation for public speaking steps. Okay. And from that, we choose one, the most important thing is the audience analysis and also the softened approach. We took these two, audience analysis and softened approach towards delivering the presentation. And finally, we close with the 7C of communication mastery, 7C of communication mastery. So we come to the end of the session, but I want to give you the take home tips for your public speaking, for your presentation for MGM. Uh, 4136, but in general about this. So what are the factors, critical success factors for your presentation? These are the, some valuable tips for you. Number one, right? You must have a good opening and closing rehearsed and memorized. You must know what is the opening to attract attention. You must know what is the closing that going to close with a bang. You must know, you must prepare rehearse with that. Number two, decide what is your core message. What is the number one message you want the audience to take home when they listen to you? What is the core message? Number three, they're talking about don't impress people. Yeah, Don't go in there and try to show off. No, you express, come from your heart. You talk to them about your heart content because you believe in the content. But don't try to show off that as if that you are the best and you know what you're talking about. No, 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 never ever do that. Don't try to impress your audience, but express your thought, okay? Then, important, very important, what is the body language that you are bring to the audience? Remember, okay? And when you talk about body language, your words are only 7%, okay? Only 7% of the effectiveness. 38% is the voice that you use, 55% of the effectiveness of the communication depends on the body language, your facial expression, the way that you stand, the way that you lean, the way that you smile. All that matters, including of eye contact. That is actually 55%. Go ahead and master this. I'll give you some of the link where you can watch some uh, tips on improving your body language. So remember, you're opening and closing, all right? Then, your core message, then your express your thoughts, master the body language, and finally ask yourself what is the wow factor of your presentation that make people think, wow, that was impressive. That is something that very useful to me. So, what is that wow factor, ladies and gentlemen, of your presentation? Okay.